Good day and uh, welcome to Honey Valia Shows. I'm your host, Sunny Fool. Assalamu alaikum adab. Sasri Akal Jai Shri Krishna. Um, today we have uh, City Council John Dyke with us. He is uh, he has served in the uh, armed forces. He's still serving in the armed forces. He's a volunteer. He is a community person. He's a city councillor for Ward 3, but he is running again. Uh, and we are going to talk about the reason he is running and the city politics, accounting, or the other issues related to the city of Edmonton. Welcome, John. Thank you, Sunil. I'm glad to be here again. So, John, uh, you are a city councillor and you are seeking your re-election also from Ward 3. Uh, all the best wishes. Thank you. Um, could you tell us why you want to be re uh, why you are seeking your re-election? For sure. Well, I don't think anyone should be a counselor for life, but I've been doing this for three years. I absolutely love it. I'm seeking one more term because I think there's a lot more work to be completed. We know that we're going to have a new mayor because our current mayor is not running again, and there's going to be several retirements on council. There's a real opportunity to refocus and regroup on council. I've been pushing for our core services to be fixed first, such as our, our roads and have adequate snow removal, deal with policing properly. There's a lot of issues that need to be done and I'm hopeful to be re-elected so I can continue that conversation at City Hall. Before we go further, John, thank you for the explanation, but before we go further, um, Gondola was very hot topic, it's like a hot cake. Uh, and you went, um, like when the, uh, the voting happened at the council, you said yes. Could you give us like a few, like in a minute or something, uh, the reason why did you thought it will be a good project? So I don't think the gondola will necessarily be a great project, but I was asked with a yes-no question about if it should proceed. There's plenty of other chances for uh, it to come before council in the future, but right now what I know is a private company uh, wants to spend about $150 million to construct this. We would ask them to set aside a million and a half dollars or whatever exactly is required to demolish it if it ever goes bankrupt. So that money will be held in trust. Uh, we'll get the accurate estimates of what needs to be in there so it will be taken down. But for now, if it goes forward, and again, that stage, that's not going to be contemplated for several months. There will be 800 construction jobs, 80 permanent jobs, and also over a million dollars a year in property tax that the city would, would receive. Uh, also from renting the, the land to the company, but also in property tax. So being open to business and open to creative ideas from the community, that's where I landed on that decision, but I get not everyone is completely on board with it, which is why we can uh, have plenty of other opportunities to engage with the public on that. Thank you, John. So, if I understood correctly, it's not a end deal. It's still a more discussion is going to happen. Right. They, the company wanted just to know if what they've presented so far seemed satisfactory. And with all the revenue the city would get from it and the assurance that there's no risk to the city, I felt forward saying, okay, we can proceed to the next stage, but there's still plenty more work to do. Thank you, John. You did brought a topic of, like you did mention in your conversation just now, taxation. Pandemic is happening, no tax increase. Um, how you will, like when, if you get re, like, you, when you're again on the council, you got re-elected, how you will be dealing with deficit and all the expenses, everything? The city has spent a lot of money for pandemic recovery and other orders of government are really putting in money for infrastructure. And, and that's great. The city of Edmonton has to get our finances in order though. So we did deliver on a 0% tax increase for the year 2021, and we've scaled it down what otherwise would have been in 2020. But since I was elected in 2017, I've constantly been pushing for 0% tax increases, and that's because I think that we're not managing our money properly right now, and I'm glad that finally this council got on board with the 0%. Uh, I mean, it was, it'd be hard to, to pitch anything of an increase during a pandemic, and, and that's fine, and, and the rest of council got that. But coming back, I want to be here for another term on council, and it's important to continue that conversation about pushing for 0%. And uh, looking at all our revenue streams, there's 
only one way that we can tax and that's through property tax. We shouldn't rely on it to the extent that we have been. We gotta be careful with our spending and also look at other creative ways to get revenue. Thank you, John. Like when you're talking about the revenue, you're ta then revenue comes with the expenses too. Um, and currently a lot of audits have been happening about the city council or the city budget, where is an imbalance between the management supervisors and the frontline people. So what's your thoughts on, on that? How you will be managing it? We have a fantastic city auditor right now, and he unfortunately is retiring. I'm on the uh, selection committee to help find a replacement for him. What we need is a robust auditor that will examine city finances department by department, pop open the lids of these black boxes and, and get to the bottom and figure out exactly what's happening. The talk, what you referenced about middle management, that was revealed through a, a previous city audit we learned that we were hiring more middle managers at a rate that was not sustainable and outpacing frontline workers. What I think we should be doing is continuing to audit our departments to ensure that we're achieving best practices, but we really need to focus on those core services which often employ frontline staff and uh, if there's room to move, I would suggest it's with middle management as that's been clearly pointed out by our city auditor. So John, other thing is like uh, recently it was in a new and is going to happen the garbage collection how it will be done new boxes and the garbage boxes will be delivered would you could you please tell our viewers how it's going to roll out um, what's the effect and importance of it not everyone is going to be pleased with the, the garbage bin rollout, and I understand that. I actually wasn't part of that decision because I'm not on the utility committee, but, but regardless, many cities around the world have these more modernized ways of collecting garbage. Uh, so you'll get a, a permanent large bin that the city will use uh, then with a mechanized truck to unload it. So there should be efficiencies there. I get that it's going to be a bit of a challenge for people that don't have a great storage location for their for the garbage bins, but there's ways that we can work around that. And uh, if you're a resident of Ward 3, you can reach out and I can try and problem solve with you. Ultimately though, this is the way that the city is going, so uh, in, in early spring, there's going to be uh, the delivery of these carts and there's going to be instructions about what to do and uh, it's like all changes there's going to be some hiccups for sure uh, i'm glad that we did have a pilot project first before implementing any type of large-scale public policy i like it if a few neighborhoods can work on it first and, and work out some of the kinks and that's exactly what happened several neighborhoods in edmonton have been using these garbage bins for a while and we've already learned some lessons so hopefully when it rolls out to the general public it'll be a bit more smooth than it otherwise would have been but I can assure you that this move was done for efficiency purposes and to make the overall waste collection experience better for everyone you know uh, the one more thing I would like to add to it because you know I'm, I'm, I I think we talked about it I'm a part of the MCR program too um, recycling program which city does it and I think this will increase the safety of the workers too so it's a lot of injuries were happening you know when you pick up the bag and it's too heavy and then you throw it you know back and forth back and I think and I hope this will increase decrease the workers health issues or the incidents um, the other question I have the you did talk about Edmonton you did talk about the taxation Racism and anti-racism that I know the city was involved the mayor has spoken also you have an anti-racism committee also Do you want to enlighten a little bit more on it? Great question. I'm appalled at the racism incidents that we're all aware about that are happening in Edmonton uh, some of them have been high profile, but I would suggest that this has been happening for years. So just because we're hearing about it more now doesn't mean that it hasn't been a problem for a while. Council has stood up the Anti-Racism Advisory Committee to address this issue and to advise councillors on, on matters of racism. Recently though, we realized it probably wasn't enough and we want to tackle this problem wholeheartedly. So we expanded the scope of that advisory committee and we added more members to it just so that we get a more robust discussion. It's something that we take very seriously. Staff at the City of Edmonton are being trained in anti-racism. As a city councillor, I'm listening to all folks' concerns, the people that I represent. Uh, I think there's a real opportunity for leadership with city council here. And uh, it's something that we take very seriously and it's, uh, it's just quite frankly, not tolerated by myself or other members of council. 
John, is other question is like now we are talking about the traffic, we are talking about the taxation, the LRT which are under construction or the new projects uh, is because they are behind. We know that, right? Um, even the south side one, and then we were planning taking up to the airport. Any update on that? The LRT projects are are massive and there's lots of interruptions with construction and because it's such a large project sometimes the delays go into years now i think that's completely unfortunate i have not been the biggest fan of lrt although i recognize that in the north there's a desire to get it up to castle downs i've i've worked to ensure that for that proposed route that uh, some of the stations will be underground at key intersections. We, we don't want to be blocking up uh, key in, in, intersections if there's going to be a ton of cars queuing uh, while a train goes by. So there's, there's things that we can do better, so I'll, I'll recognize that. Now, LRT is very important to many members of council, and it's also a, a, a way to create jobs during the pandemic. So I, I'm all about the other levels of government giving the city of Edmonton money so that we can keep building LRT. Uh, the delays that I mentioned, though, are, are not a City of Edmonton uh, area of responsibility because we contract that work out. And uh, from a project management perspective, we check in at all types of different spots and it's the taxpayers' money, so we're trying to be good stewards of that. But uh, the LRT schedule is not something that crosses my death desk on a regular basis. Uh, I can assure you that I think the work is, is, is good and important for a, a modern city. I personally, I've toyed around with the idea of bus rapid transit instead of LRT. Other members on council have championed that. What, I'm, what I mean with this is that perhaps LRT is yesterday's technology and we could be doing something different. But all that aside, we've made some exciting commitments to completing the LRT network and uh, building it out. There are delays and that's unfortunate. I always say that a strong transit system has a strong bus route network and to that extent I think that we should not be blindsided by the by the fanciness, if I can use that term, of LRT uh, when we really need to recognize that the bus network is the bones of a system and we really need to get busing right. There is a redesign of some of our, our bus routes that is coming up soon. Again, I, I was against some of those decisions on that because I think people are going to have to walk farther to get to buses uh, in some cases, and well, I know they're going to have to do that, so that can be problematic, but the overall intent of the best network redesign is to make it more efficient and modernize it. So when you talk about transit and you talk about big projects, I just want to say that we're, we're trying stuff that we haven't done before, and it's not going to be perfect. It's a large city, it's a large project. Ultimately, well... I, I would want to hear from your viewers what they think about what's going on with transit and uh, if they're excited about the LRT going further. So if, um, is that, if it's okay with you, like if the viewers or the, um, or the Edmontonians have any questions or concerns, they can reach out to your office. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. So guys, if you have any question about the LRT in the south side or in the north side or in Edmonton, um, you can contact us also or you can contact John's office and uh, they will be able to answer your questions. John, we did talk about the LRT. You did mention um, the ETS LRT and is a vast, you know, is very complex project because not only the municipality, the provincial and federal are also involved in it, in the expenses or paying the bills. Now, due to pandemic, uh, everyone is cutting the costs. Province has cut down the funding, federal has cut down. With all this cut downs or shortage of revenue, I should be saying, um, how you will be managing the expenses or how it will affect the city of Edmonton? I think it's important that we keep our own house in order. So as much as we rely on transfers from other levels of government, we have to realize that in this fluctuating space that we're in and with different political parties and election timelines, that things might not always go the way that we hope for the city of Edmonton from other levels of government. So we really need to realize what is a city responsible? What are those core services? And can we deliver them properly? So. That means maintaining 0% tax increases as far as I'm concerned and really redirecting the money that we do collect. And it's a fair amount and we get 
bus revenue from transit passes and and our, our rec centers so when you want to go work out you you pay a fee we do collect a lot of revenue we need to just ensure that we're dealing with it properly that we're efficient and we're good stewards of the tax dollar then if the other levels of government want to finance capital projects such as further LRT or, or other big projects we need to be in a situation where if they ultimately pull that funding that we don't disappoint Edmontonians and that we don't overpromise and that the, we don't rely on tax property tax money to then finance those large projects that we might not have otherwise gotten into if we weren't falsely promised them. Um. You know, John, it's it's not going it's not happened, but it's going to happen shortly. We did talk about last time, you know, the snow removal. Now the time is coming for the second part, cutting the grass. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Last year, we had a lot of back and forth, you know, who is responsible for cutting the grass. Even the Edmontonians basically came forward and they start cutting the grass on their own for their part of the community. Any plans for this year? Well, last year, when the grass wasn't being cut, I went out myself with a lawnmower in a public park and I, I pushed it and realized how much, how hard it is to, <laughs> to mow a few acres worth of grass, but there's a lot of community volunteers that came out and, and helped. But obviously that's not an ideal solution. I think at the start of the pandemic, if you look at governments around the world, there was all types of what do we do types of questions. Uh, we were significantly impacted with our revenue uh, and we, we knew that Edmontonians didn't have much tolerance for paying more in tax. We've talked about that a bit. But I think some underestimated how important proper lawn maintenance and turf maintenance is to Edmontonians. I want to be clear, I fully understand that we have a short summer and that it's important that we manicure and, and take care of our lawns properly. To me it's a core service, it's just as important as filling potholes. So. And I think all of council has heard that now. So I anticipate for the year 2021, this summer will be normal. Can't comment on mosquitoes. Hopefully they'll be down. But <laughs> I think folks should be able to get out to the parks and enjoy them without having uh, to get grass stains on their pants. On the, <laughs> yeah. I will say, I mean, I'm looking forward. Like, you know, the kids are looking forward. They have been stuck for so long. Uh, gyms have been closed. Parks have been closed. So I think this will give us the opportunity at least to go for a walk without slipping and tripping. Mm -hmm. um, so John, we till now we have talked about all about Edmonton, you know, Ed Edmontonians issues related to Edmonton. Uh, now let's go, you know, for we have few minutes left uh, to go back to Ward Three. What's your plan? What improvements you can you are looking forward to have in Ward Three? It's a good question. For those that don't know, I'll just get a few facts out of the way. The election's October 18th. I hope you come out to vote. The boundaries have been changed by an independent commission. So the new Ward 3 loses three neighborhoods and then gains six neighborhoods that used to be part of Ward 7. So it kind of goes down to the yellowhead. And then also the, the names for the wards have changed by a, also by an independent group that recommended indigenous names for the for the area. So the area that I'm running for re-election in is called Tastatini Ewok. And it's uh, exciting that, that that's being done for reconciliation. Uh, some folks might have some trouble with the pronunciation so I would encourage people to try to to try and get to know that uh, on the literature that I'll send out you'll you'll be able to see how exactly to pronounce it and some information about the boundaries but the main point is um, there's a lot of work still to be done I've been a strong advocate for the north side of Edmonton uh, there's some key roads that need to be widened. There's lights and, and other traffic measures that need to be put in place. But consistent with my message about core services, there's a lot that we need to do right. And uh, my agenda for, for the new Board 3 very much would cover, be acceptable, I'd imagine, to many uh, suburban uh, Edmontonians or, or those just around the city in general because I think that we can be more efficient with our money and deal, double down on those core services that are required for uh, a city to function properly. And then on top of all that, I, I wanna be a strong voice at City Hall. There's gonna be a lot of turnover and I think it's very important that the messages that I've been trying to push for three and a half years now get pushed for another four years. I'm interested in 
what I would say kind of common sense, but it's sort of sometimes we get distracted. Uh, too often I think we get distracted at, at City Hall and we look at projects that are not real priorities for the people that we represent. What I want to do is continue to be that strong voice promote the north side in general, local economy and our, our, our businesses. Are, and it's so important to support them now more than ever. I've had great discussions on my Facebook group, Northside Hub. Lots of local businesses have been promoted. There's all types of great community connections that we can still harness into. And uh, you know, the most fun part about a campaign, I've, I've just ran once before, but it was the conversations that I had with folks leading up to election day. Uh, I've already started my campaigning now. I'm engaging with people online as already discussed, but I'm also gonna be safely coming to your doors. Uh, I'll knock on your door, take a few steps back. I'll have a mask. If you want to chat, I'll be glad to hear what you have to say. Thank you, John, for coming to Honey Wallier Shows and giving us a update on the City Council, what we are planning, what your, your thoughts are, and what you're looking a change to. Thanks a lot. You're watching Honey Wallier Shows. I'm your host, Sonal Fool. Keep watching Honey Wallia shows. Uh, we have shows in different languages also, Hindi, English, and Punjabi. If you have any concerns or would you like us to bring any expertise on any area, please let us know. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, adab, sasrikal, good day, uh, Jai Shri Krishna. I'm taking a leave, your host, Sonal Fool.